Hello everyone and all and welcome to episode 342 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilase, coming to you as always live from YouTube. I hope you're well wherever it is that you're watching from. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, you're very, very welcome. We have a comment from Floating Man who says, hello, thank you very much, by the way, for coming to this video. We, I started the broadcast on another video a few moments ago and something seemed to go wrong with it. But anyway, we're back. Well, we, we, we hadn't even got into smelling any perfumes in the other one. Thank you very much for tuning in. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, please feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. I usually get round to all of them in the course. Uh, and also, if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you can go to the link to my coffee page in the video description below. And please do consider subscribing to this channel as well. And one more thing that I'm going to say before we start smelling, the, the idea behind this video is to sort of do a longer one where we're smelling a few new releases that have come my way. In the last few weeks, uh, indeed in the last few months, many of you have been very, very, very kind, extremely generous in doing things like, you know, buying me coffees, supporting my work, um, doing the super chats here on YouTube, and I'm extremely great. Thank you very much, Rich. You've actually kind of, I, I was going to say something else. That's very kind, Rich. What I was going to say is I'm extremely grateful, genuinely grateful. What I would say for today, if you are inclined to be generous in the same way again, please, please, please do not give me any contributions today. Please find a charity uh, that is doing some work to help the people, the victims of the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. And whatever it was that you were going to give to me, please pass it on to uh, uh, find, to, the, to to one of the charities find a charity that, uh, that 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 you feel you know works for you for whatever reason find uh, there are lots and lots of charities doing amazing work out there so please just redirect your generosity and your goodwill to those charities and i will be um very very grateful to you if 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 um you could do that um the the, the people um that are suffering out there. I cannot imagine what they're going through. And indeed, many of you may know people who are there. I, I know one person uh, who uh, believes she may have lost a few friends, but she hasn't um, had that confirmed yet because it's very, very difficult to get news and information uh, at the moment. So please let us send good thoughts and good wishes to all of the people going through what is an unimaginable event and let us try to radiate some some happiness and joy from this little corner uh, of of the world m says yes i donated to a turkey earthquake charity may do again thank you very much hello to lots of you floating man says lying in bed for an afternoon siesta surrounded by a cloud of saffron and spices that sounds ideal okay so like i said what we're going to do is today try to get through these five releases, one of my, you know, semi-occasional new releases uh, perfumes. Um, I've kind of, which ones have I smelled? The one I haven't smelled at all. Uh, one I haven't smelled for a very, 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 very long time. Um, but what seems to have happened is that there's a kind of loose theme of incense running through them, or, or at least through three of them. Uh, and I think I think we should basically just get going. So first of all, we have here from Trudon. Um, this is, well, according to its bottle, all you can see on its bottle is the word mortel, mortel. But what I can tell you is that we're meant to call this mortel noir. So this is this is effectively a flanker. I think it's the first flanker from Trudon. If you remember when they launched their perfume range in 2017, I believe it was, uh, it was with, with a few perfumes. Some were made by uh, Lynn Harris. And we also had Mortel, which was made by Yann Vanier of Givaudan. I'm sure a lot of you out there tried it. If you did, please let me know. Uh, I'd be interested to know what you thought of it. Because, oh, Sylvia says, love the original Mortel. Okay, interesting. Because I I didn't. Uh, I, I thought it was all right. But it did one of the things that... Um, frankincense perfumes tend to do. The in, incense perfumes are difficult to pull off, and I, and and I've said this on this channel before. You know, the sort of, kind of high benchmark of an incense perfume, or at least a perfume that is trying to be an out and out frankincense perfume, is something uh, is uh, like Comme des Garçons Avignon, uh, composed by Bertrand Duchaufour. Incense is a note that is tough to make, long lasting. 
and there seems to be a kind of a question of a balance and a payoff and a compromise the you can make it extremely realistic, photorealistic, like you've literally just sort of stepped into the most Catholic of Catholic churches imaginable. But if you do that, what you then seem to sacrifice is the longevity and the, the tenacity. The more long lasting you make it, um, the more it loses that photorealism. And it's fascinating to watch how some saints try to manage this balance. So as I say, uh, Comme de Garçon Avignon, I, I think is brilliant, but, but you know, admittedly, not the most long-lasting perfume in the world, although it does last pretty well on fabric. Another one that um, is high on my list is, uh, of, of, of the ones that I rate, is Andy Tower's Incense Extreme, uh, which is going back a few years now. A and that's a fascinating one because it does last quite a long time, but it it, it doesn't have that instant realistic hit of, of the Avignon. Um, Louis Vuitton did one, I think it was maybe last year or the year before, uh, that worked well. And one thing that happens with the ones that last a long time or are made to last a long time is that to my nose at least, they start becoming kind of chilly, as in cold, <laughs> not, not peppery, Chilly and thin and and overly synthetic. And I felt um, that that was the main problem with the original Mortel from Trudon. This one, I have had an initial uh, sniff of, and I thought, okay, it does seem to be warmer and more heated. Um, it, it struck me as being ever so quiet, which for something called Mortel Noir is maybe a little bit of a problem. But anyway, let's have a spray. So this is this is attributed again to Jan Vanier. It is a, a limited edition um, flanker of uh, the original Mortel. Let's pop this on here and let us have a sniff. Right. Ah, see now it, it opens it opens beautifully, really, really wonderfully because you have instantly got um, the, the, the mineralic quality that you want from a frankincense composition and also a, a really, really nicely judged black pepper note, um, something cedary in there. And I believe that it contains uh, a sort of <laughs> meaningful dosage of a Givaudan material called uh, Mystical. Um, which I haven't smelt in isolation, but apparently what it smells like if it, 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 is, is that somebody burning incense, which I would be fascinated to smell in isolation. Um, Pradeep says, Trudon fragrances are underwhelming. There were a couple that I liked, and I remember reviewing them over on personalized.com. So maybe sort of head over there and, and go to the perfume review index and, and um, have a read, because there were a couple that I thought was okay. Um, Rich says, Mystic Owl? Oh, no mystical, but mystical spelt with a K, of course. Um, love the way Amouage do incense, says Gaza. Yes, okay, that's a, that's a good one to mention as well. Something like uh, the, one of the, the, the jubilation scent, the one with the Roman numerals, you know, that's a beautiful incense. I love the way incense is hang, handled in Epic Man. I've thought what uh, they did more recently with incense in Meander was, was fascinating, a really, really interesting take on incense. Um, and this starts off much more full-bodied, much more convincing, much more interesting, much more compelling than the original Mortel. Um, but I think it too starts doing that kind of thin thing, a, a, a little bit, um, a little bit, a little bit, um, too soon. We have a we have a press release, a very very brief press release. It just says Mortel Noir unveils a more concentrated facet of Mortel's original formulation, the strength of black pepper from Madagascar blended with incense from Somalia, myrrh and benzoin reveal the erotic spell of pure cistus. 
I think I'll just leave that one there. An intense and spicy perfume, Mortel Noir has the mystical presence, has the mystical presence of an artist evolving between light and darkness. Um, okay. I'm just wondering what the subject of that sentence is. This is the English teacher in me. They can't ever quite get. Mortel Noir has the mystical presence of an artist evolving between light and darkness. I think I'm going to have to leave that one there as well for you to figure out and maybe tell me what that means. Uh, in a dark attire, Mortel Noir impresses with its matte black bottle and cap. On the label, the sole name of the perfume shines in gold letters. Well, why? Were you going to put the names of other perfumes on there as well, just to confuse us? This, ooh, I, do you know what? I think we need to make a rule that every single press release on a perfume that's ever put out needs to be run past me first. Equally adorned in hot gold, a drawing by Bastien Coulon runs on the outside of the ink black box. I haven't actually brought that with me here, so I can't show you. It features an artist as a mortal creative figure plunging into the abyss. But I think I can show you a bit of it here on this on this iPad screen. Um, can you see that? It, it it's kind of I wasn't expecting that sort of graphic from from Trudon because it's almost sort of heading into the realms of um, comic book art, which, which isn't a problem. But I didn't think was was very Trudon. So yes, okay. The mystical presence of an artist evolving between light and darkness. I'm going to try and be. I'm going to be spending time figuring out. You know what. What is doing the evolving? The mystical presence or the artist? Oh, I don't know. Do subjects and verbs go more obviously with each other in French than they do? Anyway. Um, so I enjoy the pepperiness. I enjoy how that ties in, as I say, with the mineralic quality of the incense, the sort of flinty quality of the incense. This doesn't have that kind of a lemony citrusy feel that is what makes Avignon so, spe so special. Um, but there isn't anything especially memorable about it. Uh, Gaza says, when you say um, thin, do you mean light? Good question. And no, I don't, actually. So let me try and explain what I mean by thin. I mean, okay, so... so, so... <laughs> How to do, how to explain this without hand gestures? If you if you think of a fragrance as being quite large and symphonic and perhaps occupying quite a lot of space, you know, occupying quite a broad spectrum of scents, um, this one just seems to get narrowed down into something quite thin and almost sort of shrill, maybe a bit high pitched. You know, maybe that's another way of putting it. Something that feels like it's being piped through a very, very, very thin, narrow tube. And so it doesn't have as much life as you would want it to have. It doesn't have as much body as you would want it to have. It's got diffusiveness, but it's a sort of shrill diffusiveness. Um, Rachel is saying minimalistic or rarefied. Not so much minimalistic, but maybe rarefied. Yeah, something that is just kind of losing body. As, as it as it develops um and and you 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 want it you want it to be heftier and you want it to be but there you go so the heftier means heavier and you and I said I don't mean light now I think that's the best way I can describe it like if you th if you think of the sort of image of a, of a of a of a coil of cigarette smoke that just becomes really really thin and insubstantial maybe I mean insubstantial which could also be another way of saying light. So maybe I just mean light, but I, hopefully you get what I'm trying to say now. Um, and Rachel was saying, in a synthetic way, yes. And I think and I think that's my issue. Um, it stops convincing me after a while. And it's not particularly noir. I mean, as you, as you would imagine, the, um, the, the, the pepper note fades pretty quickly. Um, but, but, but we do have a very, very, very special incense coming soon in, in today's broadcast. Okay, so uh, there will be a blotter update on all of these because when we do a new release, we talk about blotter updates. And for those of you that don't know what I mean, if you are sort of newish to the channel, uh, because we are, because I am making uh, initial 
judgments and sometimes snap judgments about these perfumes. Um, and because, because we all need to acknowledge that we mustn't make snap judgments about perfumes, what I try to do is after a few hours when I've given the scent a bit of time to develop on the blotter, I go back into the video description below and I type a sort of blotter update where I say what the scent has been doing over the course of the, of, 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 of the next few hours after I sprayed it. Um, just so that we're giving it a kind of fair crack of the whip. Now, I would like to go to one that I genuinely haven't smelt before. And this is from uh, Ross & Ross, the brand that originally uh, was born as Dear Rose, uh, the, band cre the brand created by industry legend Chantal Ross and her daughter. But I think they quite rightly decided that having the word rose in your name would make people think that all of the perfumes were going to be rose perfumes, and of course they're not. And so a little while ago, they decided to rebrand as Ross and Ross, which um, which makes a lot more sense. And it's, it's a brand that um, I think has done some very, very, very interesting work over the years. I loved their um, Mentha Religiosa, which I think is not available in the UK market. For the longest time, Fabrice Pellegrin was their sort of unofficial in-house nose, but other people have made the perfumes for them now as well. I'm struggling with this box and I have no idea why, because you would have thought it would be this. Okay, that's better. But Fabrice Pellegrin has made this one and he's also made another one that's coming up later. Um, but the brand has kind of gone a little bit under the radar lately. So I believe that in 2019, I think it was 2019, they released Pale Blue Eyes by Dominique Opion, which is well worth checking out. Very, very interesting piece of work. And then last year, they gave us three green scents. And um, this is one of them. I would very much like to share the other two with you as well, but I haven't got samples of those. And I'm guessing from the name that this is going to be an absinthe one. It's called Belle Absinthe. Ab absinthe? I, I, you, you, we don't have the first sound in French, do we? So be beautiful absinthe. Um, and I, I have smelt one of the other two green ones, the one that I think was called Globulus, which is a little bit of an unfortunate name, but but it, I think it was Globulus that sort of had Chanel number no. 19 green vibes and came across very, very well at an initial sniff. But this one I haven't smelt, so this is a genuine is it going to be love at first scent, although we do like Fabrice Pellegrin on this channel. Uh, what? It, why are you talking about Creed? Um, St still not found the updates, Rachel says Claire. You just need you, you you just need to go click on the find the video description, which is usually below. I think I think no matter what you're watching on, whether you're watching on a computer or a or a or a, or a tablet uh, or a phone, there is there is there are a few lines of text below the video, and then usually what you meant to do is click on the word more, and then it sort of reveals a whole lot more text, and that's where the blotter updates are. But Ashfaq says, Creed doesn't fit into that, nor should it. I have no idea what we're talking about there. But um, yeah, maybe I'll try and find out why you're talking about Creed. Let's let's have a spray of this supposedly beautiful absinthe. Okay, absinthe again, a tough note, a tough note to do well. It very often, I think, comes across as, as, as unconvincing. Oh, no, that's interesting. Now, this is where I wish I had a press release because I, I don't have a press release for this one. I can't tell you anything about it. Um, okay, I'm a bit stumped, which is always a good thing. This is hard to describe because it seems to somehow be, at least at this initial sniff stage, occupying the territory between something green, as you'd expect, but also something mossy and fougere-like. I'm reminded of, I'm reminded of the sort of really kind of classic fougeres, like we were talking about last week when I did my Valentine's Day video and I talked about Tom Ford's Beau de Jour and then that led us to talking about Yves Saint Laurent, Rive Gauche pour Homme. Um, it's got that slight fuzziness, bearded quality to it, which could be a kind of consequence of, of using a sort of um, absinthe note. Somebody's saying licorice, m maybe, maybe, but also 
a very, very definite, almost violet leafy greenness, but not quite violet leafy. This is this is interesting, really, really interesting. Um, what was the absinthe that Amouage did under Christopher Chong quite a few years ago? Somebody helped me out. I want to say memoir, but I could be wrong. It was the black bottle, wasn't it? Somebody, somebody will tell me in a moment. Pretty sure it was memoir. And I think it was memoir man that was the absinthe. Memoir, says Andre. Thank you very much. And so says Benji. And Tina says, yes, memoir. This is why we do this live, right? Because I would just be... <laughs> I would just not know what to say half the time. It's, it is making me think of that one because of, um, because of this really, really intriguing fuzzy quality that it's got. Okay, so I guess the effect that it's having is that it makes you think of, uh, a, 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 an absinthe bar, maybe, and I'm immediately taken to the little absinthe place in, in Antibes in the south of France because it's one of very, 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 very few that I know. I don't know, I don't know many bars full stop, and I certainly don't know many absinthe bars. So I'm kind of there with stained glass windows and wood paneling, and somehow a, a, a very sort of quiet, intimate atmosphere. And yet you're also in the middle of a forest. So if you can imagine a sort of fairy tale like um absinthe bar that manages to convey interiority but also has a kind of expansive mossy forest like quality that's this scent and i love how the green plays off with the um the fuzziness most intriguing i'm going to do something that i don't normally do because it just takes too much time but let me see if I can actually find what the official notes are. I expect most of you have already looked it up. Um, so what's it saying? Ca chamomile. Okay. That must be the... Yes, okay. The, the kind of green, dusty quality. Um, absinthe, Indonesian patchouli in the base, and three synthetics mentioned in in uh, so muscanone helvetolite and dreamwood dreamwood i believe is a recent ish fernish um sandalwood material uh, fabrice pelagan is a fernish perfumer so although i'm i'm not immediately getting a but maybe that's maybe that's the kind of creaminess maybe that's the sort of milkiness that's coming through and also setalox it says in the base and Cetalox, if you want to know what Cetalox smells like, all you need to do is smell not a perfume from Juliet Has a Gun, because that's one of those single ingredient scents, and, and the single ingredient there is Cetalox. Um, this is this is intriguing. A Brother's Grim type scent, says Tamara. Yes. Yeah, it's got it's got a strange quality to it. Um Ah, I, I, I shall, I shall very, very, be very, very curious to wear this on skin, and and I kind of wasn't expecting that that kind of heading into more overtly masculine territory vibe from it. Ah, okay, okay, mustn't get too sidetracked. Okay, let's move on to another incense one. And I'd like to talk about this one. So this is the latest, although it was released a few months ago. This is the latest from Histoire de Parfum, and it's called Ensemble Roi, or Incense King. Now this, you may still be able to tell from the, the, the shine. There you go, you can see this is, this is still sealed. But I smelt this once at a kind of showcase in London done by the, um, the, the company that distributes this brand. And... I immediately kind of thought, oh gosh, is this going to be one of those best frankincense perfumes of all time type scents? Um, but I didn't have a chance to test it properly because you never do at these things because you're smelling about, you know, 40 different perfumes. And it's only recently that um, I, I got this. And so I, I'm so excited to 
uh, unveil it here with you. But but we're not going to answer the question in this broadcast about how long it lasts and how, what its tenacity is like. But we will certainly answer the question in the in the blotter update. So first of all, let's have a reveal. I'm unpacking. Now we've talked about we've talked about this brand a few times in the past, and I think we all agree that it is massively, massively underrated, certainly um, in the UK. In fact, I couldn't even tell you exactly where you, you could get it in the UK now. I think their stuff is still available at Harvey Nichols. How on earth do you get into one of these? Oh, there we go. <laughs> the usual way. Right, let's see. Have people um, smelt this one, I wonder? Okay, let's get it out here. Should we have that as our little backdrop? That's quite a cool backdrop there, isn't it? Okay, let's pop that over here. And let's see what we think. Uh, what's OMG can't find a username saying, this one reminded me a lot of Comme des Garçons, Avignon. Well, there you go. It probably did me as well. So let's see, there's the bottle, standard Histoire de Parfum bottle with um, the name on the side. Okay, let's stick that on there. Hmm. Okay, see, I'm I'm straight back into that uh, showcase. It was a, it was the top of a hotel in London a few months ago. Ah, but I don't remember it being. I don't remember it being this spicy, and I think that's what I found interesting about it at the time because I thought, yes, it is. It is frankincense and it's got all of those qualities that you want from a good alibinin perfume. So it's got that, we've talked about a mineralic feel, we've talked about the woodiness, we've talked about the smokiness, we've talked about that kind of lemony quality. Um, but, but it's dry, spicy. And I think that's because they very helpfully actually put their notes on the side. That's it. It's got a it's got a, a saffron note, and it's got in the top, um, Sheena Small, which uh, is sometimes referred to, I think, as pink pepper, except uh, sort of strictly speaking, botanically speaking, apparently it's not a pepper. It, it's got a kind of peppery quality to it. Um, is it is it giving church incense incense says Prof Melvin? Yes and no. You know how I said that the Ross and Ross was like a sort of absinthe bar in the middle of a forest? This is like a Catholic church. I'm going to say something really sacrilegious, but you know I mean it. In, I mean it because I want to be descriptive. This is like a Catholic church in Dante's Inferno. So it's like it's 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 got it's got the incense swirling around in the middle of the church, but it's surrounded by fire and it's surrounded by flames and heat and and you know ambery flame flames licking licking at the the foundations of the church um it's good it is good stuff what what else is on here so olibanum and shinismol uh saffron what's what's piment is piment just like pepper or chilies um atlas cedar white cocoa that's interesting oh and oh it's got the o word oh sorry it's got the o word um in case anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's oud. Apparently, it's got an oud note. Um, not that not that it actually comes across in any. You know, it's not it's not an oud perfume, and I don't think it's even pretending to be an oud perfume. So don't worry. Um, but so it's kind of like okay. I think I think I think I'm getting a kind of good sort of perfume reference description. It is like um, Comme de Garçon Avignon but as interpreted by Amouage. So if you can think of something like, uh, maybe let's go with Amouage Epic Man, um, lending its spicy sensibility to Comme de Garçon Avignon, um, then I think you would get a sense, and, it, and, and it's reminding me of something else, and this is going to bug me, but this may have to go into, into the, the video description, but this is really going to bug me, because it's reminding me of another incense perfume as well, a good one, 
Maybe, maybe the, the the Louis Vuitton. What was the what was the the Louis Vuitton one from? I think it may have been from last year. Its its name escapes me. But was it was it something like Nomad or um, Nuit de Fur? Thank you. Why did I think no? That's it. It's got that kind of quality to it. A very very um, fiery quality to it. But, and something else. Something else. It'll come to me. It will. It will come to me. What it reminds me of. Um, but yeah, this is this is a, this is this is a good one. This is definitely, definitely, definitely staying in my collection. And there is there is um, something regal about it as well. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised that they went for a kingly name. Hmm. Okay. Right. So we've done three. Now let's go to the the, the last two. I have I have smelt, but one I've just sort of smelt fairly briefly, and one I've worn a lot. Uh, let's do let's do the latest from and perfume the brand set up by Simon Constantine and I'm kind of doing this for the sake of continuity because I think I have so far covered every single thing that and have released uh, and Simon Constantine himself uh, very very uh, kindly came on this channel a, a while ago to do an interview so this is their new one came out very very recently in fact I think maybe just a couple of weeks ago uh, it's called Bark and I have to say I wasn't so taken with this but like I said for the sake of for the sake of completeness let us give it its its uh, due time in the spotlight here. Very, very green juice. Um, interestingly green juice, actually. Uh, and Smarks, Smarks, the answer to your question is always in the video description below because the, the, the answer to the question is different from video to video. Um, and let us have a spray just to remind myself. I wasn't taken with this one because I thought it was just a little bit too... Yeah, the, the, I'm just conscious of the fact that saying it was a little bit too yeah doesn't actually tell you anything at all. So let us try to articulate and um, conjure some vocab to, into, the, into, these, into this mouth. It's, I just thought this one was a little bit crude, a little bit sort of, you know, everything and, and the kitchen sink as well. And there's something in there, there's a sort of, sickly sweet woody type note which maybe is the bark in question that I found quite hard to take. Madame Persilace had no time for this at all. I sprayed some of this and she immediately just sort of thought what you know get away from me so there you go but the thing that makes all of the and fragrances interesting is that so far not a single one of them has been a wallflower and you know that that is an approach that is an aesthetic that I very much applaud. Um, Personally, I, I, I can't stand things that are forgettably pleasant. I was actually at the launch of, uh, in London a few days ago, of a new brand called um, Grace de Monaco, as in Grace Kelly. And um, I think what the brand are doing is very, very commendable because they are linked with the Princess Grace Foundation, which gives grants and financial support to up and coming artists. And so now they have also launched two perfumes, both of them by Olivier Cresp. And uh, apparently 100% of the profits that they make from the perfumes, this is what they said, 100% of the profits is going to go to the Princess Grace Foundation, which is commendable. But I found the perfumes themselves so wan and, you know, in inverted commas, pleasant that I couldn't tell you the first thing about them now. And I think if I smelt them again, I, I I wouldn't be able to recall them or anything. Maybe that's what they need to do. Maybe they need to appeal to the, the absolute lowest common denominator in order to shift lots and lots of bottles. But, but you will also have thought that they may want to go for a bit of longevity. Anyway, the point, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I think that is um, the, the my least favorite style of perfumery, whereas at least something like this can be um, is, 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 is interesting on some level, can be challenging. It's trying to be brash. It's trying to be bold. It doesn't work for me personally, just because I think it's just a, it's just a bit too plasticky and harsh. But there is a very, very brief press release, which I haven't read. I deliberately haven't read it yet, because let's see if um, it sort of sheds light on how we are meant to uh, read the scent. 
So we have got a uh, UK-based ethical perfume house and fragrance announces their next perfume to join their vegan fragrance range. Each perfume in the collection invites the consumer into a place, a community and a cause that is dear to their perfumer, Simon Constantine's heart. Uh, Bark takes us into a bold voyage centred around Amazonian rosewood. Interesting. And straight to the soul of the forest. Rosewood and its fresh forest notes are paired with rich mango absolute. Oh, okay. See the freshness. I think it's the freshness that I just don't find convincing. It's a little bit, it's it's a little bit sort of cheap shower gel freshness, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, a rich mango absolute and a daring splash of marijuana notes, not actual cannabis though, okay, which gives green notes a whole new meaning. Rosewood has a fresh, light citrus note that pairs perfectly with the notes of Douglas fir and um, cedarwood. The wild, endangered Brazilian rosewood essential oil is produced from the branches and leaves and guarantees that no trees were harmed in the process of making this fragrance. The essential oil comes from suppliers who grow these trees in protected environments using only a pruning method to make the oils. And fragrance, they say, goes beyond sustainable. Bark was created to place a spotlight on the illegal de deforestation of rosewood, which threatens the last remaining wild trees that are found in the Amazon basin, which is, again, commendable, but um, smell it for yourselves. I will not be rushing to wear this. I think maybe it is the mango, because I, I, I think I think there's something that I, I, I can't quite take about the this... I was going to say contrast, but I don't see it as a contrast. I see it as a clash between these hyper, hyper fresh notes and the kind of tart sweetness. I'm just not sure it works. I'm not sure it works, but interesting. Check it out. Uh, Dev says, all this cannabis reaches makes me roll my eyes. The smell of real burning marijuana is putrid to me and see no reason why a perfumey version of that would be appealing. Um, what are your favorite perfumes with a good rosewood presence, says Frag Chai Tan. Oh, I don't know. I think maybe I'll pass that question on to other people. Um, so, hmm, interesting, interesting. Um, but yeah, as I say, not for me. We have got one more to go, and it's a good one. Uh, and I will, I will at this point say something that I like. I've said I, I need to get better at saying this. If you're watching this video and you like it, please like it, okay? You know, give the little thumbs up um, a, a go there because it helps with the old YouTube algorithm. So if you are enjoying it, then please give it a thumbs up. If, if you're not enjoying it, then don't, but hopefully you are enjoying it. Okay. Oh, and I've actually seen the number of likes go up immediately. So thank you very much. Um, the last one is this little thing here that uh, was sent to me. It's, you, you may be aware that the French perfume publication, Ne, as in nose, French perfume publication that also comes out in an English translation, a few years ago, they started doing some perfumes which they so, sold in this one plus one range. And the idea is that each scent is a kind of encounter uh, between a perfumer and uh, somebody somebody who's very, very highly regarded and, 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 and successful in their own discipline. Um, so I believe, I, th I think Marjan Satrapi, the, the writer and, and uh, graphic artist, did one with, I'm going to say it was with Mathilde Bijawi, but I can't remember. I think Maurice Roussel has done one. Um, and and the, 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 they've all been interesting. I've liked some more than others, and I think some of them have been covered on here on this channel. Um, but I, 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 th I thought maybe that was a project that sort of finished. And then this arrived in the post uh, with, with this kind of publication to go with it, of a sort of thin pamphlet. Um, and I must admit, when I first read the description of it, I thought, oh, OK, here we go. This is the, the encounter here is between the Ferminish perfumer Fabrice Pellegrin, who made the Ross and Ross perfume that we were just talking about, and a chef called Akrame Benalal. Now, I know next to nothing about celebrity chefs. I enjoy food and I love food and I love cooking, um, but I know nothing about, you know, things like Michelin stars and celebrity chefs, etc. So the note that, uh, so, so his name didn't mean very much to me, but it may mean a lot to, to you. 
Um, and the note said, uh, Adorem, because this perfume is called Adorem, has been co-created by our perfumer Fabrice Pellegrin and the Michelin star chef Akrame Benalal. They worked together on the idea of an olfactory interpretation of the color black. And that's when my heart sank a little bit because I thought, oh, okay, that's been done, you know, the whole, the whole color black thing. Well, let's just try and put that idea out of my mind so that I can sort of smell the perfume um, without, without that idea coloring me, so to speak, coloring my thoughts. But gosh, um, I, I should, I should have, you know, I should have trusted, I should have tr trusted Fabrice Pellegrin um, because th this is good. This is good. And actually it, it really is kind of black. Um, so I've just sprayed it. Um, It's, it's so annoying that this is going to be probably available in small quantities. You can order it through the Ne website. And um, I shouldn't be telling you this until I actually talk about the scent. Um, but I'll tell you this bit now. If you buy it on its own, you can buy the 15 mils, I think, for 29 euros. I would say worth every euro. Or you can buy it for 42 euros. <clears throat> with the corresponding issue of Ney magazine. Uh, and if you want to get it in North America, you just go to luckyscent.com or ney-editions.us. Um, Gavin says, yeah, 29 euros for 15 mils. I was checking. And this, again, same as with the Histoire de Parfum, immediately goes up into the, gosh, is this one of the best incense perfumes I've smelt for a long time? Um, and it's what makes this one interesting is the combo of the sort of licorice and incense. And it's really, really resiny and um, gummy and beautifully sort of beautifully sticky and enveloping and velvety and peppery, but not, not overly peppery. It, it it smells so sort of smoky. And actually, Madame Perselace put it best. She completely went for this because she said it was sooty. And th that's such a good word for this one because it's kind of dark, dark, dark gray, black. But it, it almost feels like you could sort of reach into it and have this kind of black tar all over your fingers. It, ooh, and, and, and you can't tell yet. Um, but I have worn this a few times, but it's going to be one of these ones where I'm not going to be able to wear it much because I'm going to want to save every drop. Sounds a bit like Comme de Garçon Black, says Pradeep. Maybe, maybe, but but I, I, I think this one's better. What's this called, says Rich Mitch? It's called Adorem. Can you see that there? So it's from the Ne One Plus One range, and it's just called Adorem. Um, Sounds interesting to smell one drop, but I'm not sure it's great for anything more than three mil, says Dev. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think this is doing something with it within sense that maybe we haven't smelt for a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm not proposing to read the whole magazine to you, even though you might quite like me to. There's an interview here with Fabrice Pellegrin, an interview with the chef. But I will just read bits of what they say about incense. A mysterious and mystical ingredient, this resin, also known as frankincense or olibanum, comes from a tree native to the Arabian Peninsula and the Horn of Africa. Boswellia grows at high altitudes in arid areas where the wind contorts its branches, as well as its trunk, several meters long. When its bark is cut, it exudes a substance that takes the form of milky tears. Once they have been left to harden in the open air, they're collected and then processed. Burned since ancient times for spiritual purposes, incense accompanies meditation and prayer in many religions. Its name comes from the Latin incensum, which means material burned as a sacrifice. It is also used in perfumery for its peppery, resinous and terpenic facets. Incense essential oil and SFE extracts feature nuances that are more acidic and overpowering, while the absolute tends toward the balsamic and mineralic. A special process is used to obtain a pyrogenic extract. A device by the name of Vulcane heats the resin to a high temperature of about 280 to 300 degrees Celsius. This ingredient, which Fermanish has named Vulcane incense, acquires smoky, almost leathery effects, and it lies at the heart of Adorem. So you're getting a special type of incense extraction um, 
that according to this is particular to, to, to Fermanish. And then there's an extended quote from Fabrice Pellegrin, which I think is, is worth reading. He says, Akrame, the chef, talked a lot about the color black, about smoky and burnt flavors, which play an important part in his cooking. He also mentioned his connection to incense, a natural raw material that was a logical choice for this composition. It takes center stage in Adorem, where it is used in overdose. I chose a specific type, Vulcane incense, which we've just been talking about, which has a uh, smoky profile. To make it more accessible, I wrapped it in a cocoa absolute, which gives it roundness and softness, what I'd be tempted to call a fleshy dimension. He's so right there, actually. And a vanilla infusion, which adds a delicate touch. For the top note, I used the freshness and potency of SFE incense, which is a CO2 extract, along with pink pepper and LME to bring tension and a certain verticality to the composition. Then there's the woody base, dominated by patchouli and cedar, which draws out the notes somewhat dense, dark aspect. It's a simple construction with very few ingredients, but keeping it simple is always complicated, he says. This is, um, th this is good stuff. This is good stuff. And and he's so right. It's smoky, dark, black, sooty, fleshy. And that cocoa, I should have mentioned the cocoa as well, because you get that kind of, that connects really, really beautifully with the patchouli in the base. It's, um, it, it, it just, it just works extremely well, works extremely well. And uh, I, I'm not taken to, you know, making quick decisions, but I would be surprised if this is not on my list of the top 10 perfumes of the top 10 best perfumes of the year if we make it to December. Um, so, so, so taken with this. I may have to order a, a kind of backup bottle for myself because it would be a shame to have only 15 mils of this. Okay, so I think I think we're done. <laughs> um, let's have a quick sniff. Actually, before I sniff the blotters, this isn't going to mean very much to people watching the recording, but if you're watching the live, fingers crossed, what I'm hoping to do tomorrow morning UK time is show you a live uh, fragrance consultation uh, from the boutique of an extremely well-known brand in London. Um, everything, whether we can go live will depend on how strong the Wi-Fi connection is, what the setup is like over there. But even if I can't go live, um, I will record the session and then upload it later. And I have got a willing subject, a willing volunteer, a guinea pig, because it's not me going to be doing the fragrance consultation, because I always think it's unfair doing these fragrance consultations on me, because I, I know the brand well, and I would start trying to recognize the perfumes, and I would sort of say, oh, you know, I, I, I would I would probably just, I, I, would be, I, I would be so not the typical customer that it wouldn't be fair broadcasting that. So I have got a willing subject, uh, so hopefully all will go according to plan tomorrow, the idea is that we will start broadcasting at 11 a.m. UK time, which I know is going to be dreadfully early for uh, folks in, in North America. So I'm very sorry about that. But it might be OK for those of you in Australia and in uh, you know East of Asia. But, 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 but at, at some stage, you will all be able to watch it. Um, is it is it your niece, says Gavin? No, actually, good guess. But it's not my niece. It's not my niece. Now let's have a re-smell of the blotters. Let's see how they're all doing. So this is the Trudon. So this is Mortel. Yeah, see the Trudon is just, it's doing that, it's doing that thin, shrill, thin, insubstantial thing, which it, uh, I, I, I don't have a huge amount of time for. Uh, this is the Ross and Ross. Um, oh, Rich Mitch says, I've just bought the Adorum. Oh goodness. Well, I hope you like it. This is the Ross and Ross. This is interesting. Now it's kind of gone all yellow and yellow and green and almost sort of mimosary. Very, very strange. Um, oh, this is the and one, bark. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing it again. I think, I think, I th is, is yeah my way of saying I don't like it? Um, just doesn't quite work, I think. Doesn't quite work. And this is the Histoire de Parfum. Hmm. So yes, this is this is incense, very, very, very much done Arabian style. I'm liking that one as well. And let's have another sniff of the Adorem. I'd love to smell that that Vulcane incense in isolation. That would be fascinating. Okay, 
thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see some of you tomorrow. Uh, and uh, be good and stay tuned to social media for details of more episodes coming your way soon. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.